welcome to the third presentation on the counters the first presentation was the introduction of the counter we saw what is divide by two circuit how we can divide the frequency by two and we saw the basics of counter there which will help us in this presentation also and the second presentation was the classification of the counters in which we saw what is an asynchronous counter and a synchronous counter now this is best time to study the three bit asynchronous up counter it is asynchronous and also the up counter by asynchronous we mean the clock is not given simultaneously to all the flip-flops used but the output of the first flip-flop will act as the clock for the next flip-flop this is the meaning of the asynchronous counter and by up we mean it will start counting from the lower value and every clock pulse when every clock pulse passes it will count to the higher value for example if it is at 1 then for the next clock pulse it will count 2 and then 3 and then 4 and the first thing in this is 3 bit so what we actually mean by 3 bit we will count from 0 0 0 all the way to 1 1 1 because we know that the maximum possible count in case of 3 bit is 7 and it will start from 0 and end up 7 so you know the heading you know what we have to study we have to study 3 bit asynchronous sub counter so we will start from the circuit on the left hand side of the screen you can see the circuit for it in this I have used 3 flip flops A B C and the clock the main clock is given here you can say that the external clock is given to the A flip flop and then the output of the flip flop A which which is QA is given to the B flip flop and then again the output of the B flip flop QB is given to the C flip flop in this way the clock has been given to the different flip flops and uh, there is one important point we want toggling and for toggling we have to make JA JB JC1 as well KA KB KC equal to 1 so I have given a common input to all this input of the flip flops and this common input is logic 1 which means it is high so we definitely have toggling and the another point is you can see this symbol it shows that it is a negative astrogring this bubble means negative and this arrow means edge so in total it gives us negative edge triggering so these are the informations that we require in the beginning of this presentation and by using this timing diagram we can find out how it actually counts and from what point it starts counting and at what point it ends also I have taken QA QB and QC like this and they are our outputs in which QA is the LSB least significant bit and QC is MSB the most significant bit which means if I talk about this bits then this one will be QC this middle one will be QB and this rightmost one will be QA so the values of QA, QB and QC will give us the count and the count these values the bits depends upon the clock so we have to analyze this timing diagram and this clock is the external clock given to the flip flop number A and it is negative edge triggered so definitely all the changes in the flip flop A will occur at the falling edge I have already pointed out all these falling edges so we can have no problem in analyzing it so let's start with the output number 1 that is QA so I have QA here and initially it is 0 and it will remain 0 or low till this falling edge and as the value of J A and K A the value of J A and K A is equal to 1 we have toggling and in toggling you remember that Q n plus 1 which is the next state is equal to Q n complement so the next state is equal to the complement of the present state so at this falling edge the next state will be 1 because the present state is 0 so taking its complement we have 1 and it will remain 1 or high till the next falling edge and again we have the toggling so 1 will become 0 it will go low till the next falling edge and in the same way we can plot the value of QA for the rest of the falling edges it's not a new thing for you you have already seen these things many time so this is how QA will look now the important and interesting point comes you don't have to see this clock again 
the job of this clock has been done for QA and now this QA if you see this circuit the QA is now going in the clock of the B which means this QA will now act as the clock for the B flip-flop so if I want to plot QB then I don't have to see this clock but I have to see QA now QA is acting as the clock so I will consider all the falling edges in QA and the toggling will occur in B flip-flop depending upon this falling edges so let's do it it is low initially and it will remain low for the first falling edge which is this one and the toggling will be there making it high up to the next falling edge and again it will go low because of toggling for this falling edge then finally it will go high and then low so this is how QB will look now we can move to the last output of ours that is QC and again we don't have to look this clock or this clock we have to see QB because QB is acting as the clock for the C flip flop so we will see this falling edges only it is a low initially so it will go low till this falling edge and because of toggling because JC is equal to 1 and KC is also equal to 1 we have toggling and then toggling will give us high signal after this falling edge and it will go high till this falling edge and then a low so in this way we can plot QA, QB and QC now we can make the table for this 3 bit asynchronous sub counter and we can see how it is actually counting depending upon this waveforms that we have just obtained so I will make a simple table for this in which the first column is clock and uh, the second column will give us the outputs QC, QB, QA and the final column will give us decimal equivalent okay I will separate them by the straight line vertical straight lines okay and we will consider the initially initial condition when the clock is just applied and then we have the first first falling edge then the second falling edge similarly third falling edge we will analyze first these three falling edges then we can move forward for the fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth falling edge so let's see what we got here from the waveforms we have obtained let's see initially what are the values of QA QB and QC so initially you can see QA is 0, QB is also 0 and QC is 0. So I can write 0, 0, 0 and the decimal equivalent of the 0, 0 and 0 is definitely 0. Now we can see the first falling edge. Let's see what we got in that case. For the first falling edge, QA is 1, QB is 0 and QC is 0 again. So I will write 0, 0, 1 and the decimal equivalent is 1 for the second falling edge QA is now 0 QB is 1 and QC is 0 so we have 0 1 0 which is definitely equal to 2 and then for the third falling edge QA is 1 QB is 1 and QC is 0 again so I have 0 1 1 which is the decimal equivalent of 3 now we will check for the rest of the falling edges which is my fourth falling edge this arrow downward arrow represents that is it is for the falling edge and uh, the fifth falling edge is there sixth seventh and finally the eighth one let's complete this table quickly then we have to draw some important results so we will move for the fourth falling edge and in fourth falling edge you can see the value of QA is equal to 0 the value of QB is 0 and for the first time the value of QC goes high that is 1 so for the fourth falling edge I have 1 0 0 which is definitely the equivalent of 4 now for the fifth falling edge we will repeat the same procedure 1 0 1 for the sixth I am having 0 1 and this is 1 for 7th I have 1 1 1 and for 8th I have 0 0 0 so I will quickly write down all these values for 5th I have 1 0 1 this is 1 1 0 
1 1 1 and finally 0 0 and 0 this is equivalent of 5 6 7 and 0 now you can see it is starts counting from 0 and end counting at 7 and again it goes to 0 and I have already explained you this points if this happens we just count the clock pulses before 0 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 in total 8 states are there so the number of states is equal to 2 to the power n where n is the number of flip-flops so 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8 in this way you can get your number of states and uh, if you want to get the maximum count then maximum count is equal to maximum count is equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 which gives us 8 minus 1 that is 7 so you can see the maximum number that you can count is 7 in this case and you can easily find out it by 2 to the power n minus 1 where n is the number of flip-flop used so this was a simple presentation in which we just saw how the 3 bit asynchronous up counter works and uh, let me tell you how it is up counter it was 0 then 1 then 2 3 4 5 6 and all the way to 7 so it is an up counter because every time the clock pulse is passing your your value is getting high so this is what we have to do in the up counters so i will end this presentation here because i think uh, it is clear to you now and uh, in the next presentation we will try to understand the 4 bit asynchronous up counter which will have the working same as this one but only the number of states and the maximum count will increase so see you in the next presentation